Hi guys, it's Art, FornyMarty.com, and going live tonight. I didn't notify anybody. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to go live. Let me see. I'm still setting things up. Here we go. Okay. I think I've got everything set up now. So I'll wait for a few people to come in. Make some minor adjustments here. Okay. Okay. It says we have four people watching. JW's here. J and K's here. How y'all doing tonight? Let's see if I can set that a little bit better here. So, uh, Jordan's here uh, too. I think I'm a little bit crooked there. Let's see. Okay. Just a little bit. As everybody probably knows, Hey, Marilyn's here. How are you tonight, Marilyn? Uh, everybody knows, I'm, or should know, I'm in Nina's studio. Um, this is her dedicated uh, studio. She's not here. Uh, she's in Austin uh, visiting her sister. And uh, so, as everybody knows, if Old Smokey's not going live, I'm unsupervised, I'm going live. Uh, I'm doing good, Marilyn. I've got a, a little bit of a, a sore throat, so if y'all could just bear with me. Um, you know, things happen. I don't have the coronavirus or the Wuhan, Wuhan so I think I'm, I'm doing good. Let's see here. We have eight people watching now. So hopefully everybody watched our last video with Nina and I doing the little fighting uh, back and forth. Of course, Nina won, but yeah, that's 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 just the way it goes. So we got we got a uh, yeah you know after we shot the video and, and we watched it we uh, I don't know I was laughing. Uh, Dubs here. We, we've got, we're, we're going to try to change our, our format a little bit on, on these videos. I'm trying to put a little more humor into them. I, I know uh, happy wife, happy life. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're going to try to put uh, a little bit of, of humor in, in the videos, the upcoming videos. And uh, I, I know sometimes my reviews can get a little dry. So I, I we, we've got a, a few ideas. Um, hope everybody watched our new channel, uh, Sleepy Dog Construction. Uh, we've got one funny video on it, and then we have a, a serious video, and it's, it's construction videos. Uh, and I think the next one coming out will be should be a, a, another funny video. Uh, we've got a lot of video of construction sites, and everybody knows. Uh, I'm around construction. Uh, how can I get some MREs for myself? The menu on different types. Um, William, you know, the best source to buy, hey, Outdoor Tactical, Vasily, how are you today? Or I guess this probably morning for you. Uh, has everybody seen the prices of the, the rations on eBay? I think because of the virus going around, um, you know, I used to be able to get a case or two cases, a case of A and a case of B, you know, 2018, 2019, uh, you know, 125 to $150. And now some of them are $200 a, a case. Uh, I see Nina's here. Um, hope you don't mind. I'm in your studio. <laughs> uh, and the foreign rations too have, have just really went up with the USDA. Um, 
I, I was looking at some, the, the, the prices were just crazy. Um, I noticed that the Lithuanian rations were still pretty reasonable. They're 20 to $30, but everything else has really gone up. Um, let's see, Smitty's here. Hello from Canada. Uh, Tracy Phillips, I haven't seen you in a while. I've, I've, have, I've watched a few of your videos, Tracy, but golly, man, I just, I watch them on TV and I can't leave a comment. Um, I'm, I'm way behind. Uh, Eco Eco from Indonesia is here. Pat Miller's here. Wow, everybody's here. Uh, Smitty, what part of Canada are you from? I think I've asked you that before. So, so back to the rations on, on uh, eBay. They're, they're just outrageous now. It's, it's, it's crazy. I, I saw where a guy was selling two cases, a case of A and B for 400 bucks. Um, Oh, okay. British Columbia. I, I was born in Scarborough, just outside of Toronto. And I, I think, Smitty, do, uh, do you own an engineering company? Uh, and, and how's the weather in, in British Columbia? Here it's in the 60s. It's kind of, uh, yeah, Ontario boy. Um, the weather here is just kind of crazy. Yesterday it was, it was cold for us. You know, it was got down in the 30s at night and the high yesterday was in low 50s and today it's 60. And then I think the rest of the week is supposed to be in the 80s. Uh, yeah, I'm a dirt nerd. Okay, I, I work for an engineering company also. Uh, we do project management and we, we do a, just a, do a lot of, of uh, state work, city work, county work, a lot of design work. Um, uh, let's see. Still get a case A B for $90, which is still high. It, it, if you tell me where you get them for $90, I'd like to buy some, man, they just, I, I haven't been able to find them. I look on eBay all the time and it's, it's just, I just can't believe the way the prices are going. And, and I think that it's, it's because of the virus going around. Let's see. Show that. Uh, surplus in my videos. Okay. Um, man, I would like to get some for $90. Yeah, eBay prices is just, just crazy. Uh, you know, we've had a, a, a lot of sales. We, we've sold out on all of our, I think we have one American ration. We've got some meal cold weathers. And of course, it, it, you saw the video. We, we have uh, uh, some first strike rations in. Uh, but everybody's just been buying the, the MREs, I, I, I think because of what's going on. Uh, yeah, JW, they, 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 uh, that's just crazy. Let's see, Joe's Army and Navy. I'll have to check that out. Hey, Fred's here. How you doing, Fred? Haven't seen you in a while. Um, I hope you're doing well. And then, so I was on eBay trying to find something to to review. You know, we, we've got the American rations. We've still got some remnants of the uh, Russian and, and British. And so I was trying to find something on eBay and then I ran across these, these humanitarian rations. And we got menu, menu number five. I, I've seen these before, but I've never had one. Um, it says the bag contains a one day complete food requirement for one person. And it's written in several different languages made by the Warnick company. Uh, it says gift from the people of the United States of America. I don't know if you can see that or not. So 
I, I looked at, and it's a 24 hour ration, or at least it contains three, three mains. Uh, none of them have any meat in them. So I, I think I'm probably gonna shoot that one tomorrow. Um, Nina will probably be home, I don't know, in the afternoon. So I'll probably try to shoot that in the morning. There's another one. I don't know if Nina's gonna try to review it or not. Um, and the, the, I bought these, the production date's supposed to be 2010. So that'll put them about 10 years old. So I'm not sure if they're still edible. It, I think they were stored correctly. The guy said they were. Uh, so we'll give it a try. Live stream of ration. No, I'm not that good. I, I did think about doing that. And then I, I, I thought better of it. Uh, and especially this ration uh, being three mains, maybe, uh, next live, uh, maybe do a, a single meal. Um, but yeah, I, trying to do a 24 hour ration on a live stream. Heck, I can barely get them done on a video. Um, I'd have a lot of, what's those Smokey call them? Happy accidents. So no, not gonna do that. And then I think Nina's going to, uh, not really review a, a, a brown, old brown ration. I think she's just gonna do like a what's inside. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. Some of those, these brown bag rations are from the eighties. So I don't really know if they're edible or not. Um, we, we sold one of the, the Frankfurt's five fingers of death today. Um, so I'm hoping that person will review it. Uh, Nina says I can review it. Uh, yeah, Nina, try the cheese. Yeah, as soon as you open that cheese up, that'll be it for Nina. Um, that, I've I've done. Uh, Old Smokey sent me one uh, beef patty. Uh, I think it was thirty years old and uh, reviewed it. And man, that cheese! It was. <laughs> uh, it, it was crazy. Uh, I see some of the reviewers try it, but I, I can't try it, no. Let's see, he says we have nine people watching. And let's see what else has been going on with the, the ration world. Uh, the beef patty was purple. Uh, yeah, it is an awesome mug. This is uh, one of my favorite mugs. This is Park Avenue Coffee. This is Marilyn. And after the video, there'll be a link to her uh, website. She has the, man, she's got all kinds of stuff. It's just, you have to go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I saw Steve had a review let go today, but I didn't have time to watch it yet. Um, I think it was a 1906, some, uh, very early. So I'm excited to look at that. Um, hey, Zeno's here. Wow, we're up to 20 people. I think that might be a record for, for, for me. One and a half hours, can't wait. Um, like a ration movie. Are, are you talking about Steve's video that he just put out? Is an hour and a half? If it is, I have to watch that one definitely on the, on the TV where I can lay out on the couch and, and relax. Um, An hour and 35 minutes. Wow. Man. Yeah, I definitely have to watch that one from the couch. First outside review coming soon. What are, what are you going to review? And where, where are you located, uh, Dub? Are you here in the States, North, South? Looking forward to that. Let's see, 
You want to be good? What about you? Yes, yes, yeah, Smitty, if uh, you do one outside, I imagine it's pretty cold where you're at. How cold is it there, Smitty? I think I asked you a few minutes ago. Michigan heading up towards up. I, I've been to Michigan. Uh, like I told Smitty, I was born in Ontario. My, my parents used to, when they retired, they'd stay at different uh, cities in in uh, Ontario, and one time they were they were way out uh, west from Ontario, and I had to go all the way up through Michigan to the tip to uh, Sault Ste. Marie, and and cross that uh, uh, what's the name of that bridge, uh, the McKinney Bridge, I think it is, and I hated that. I don't like heights to begin with, and as you're going across that bridge. You can see through the bridge, and all I could do when I was driving was just look straight ahead. I, I, I did look down once. Uh, see. Hey, bikers here. Let's see, uh, Nina's got to go. She'll call you later. I guess that love you is for everybody, or is it just for me? <laughs> uh, see, bridge gates are wild. I, you know, I was watching a documentary on that bridge, and and now when the last time I crossed it was like '89, uh, and now I think they have people that you. I I don't know what happened. That that's the first time that's ever happened. Uh, that I lost the live stream. Yeah, it's scary when it's windy, but I don't know if you you heard me. I think I lost the live stream. Uh, I read. I had a doc. I saw a documentary on the, the bridge, and you can now hire people to drive you across. Uh, and and I noticed when I was there, it was windy, and they they would shut. It wasn't real windy, but they would shut the the bridge down, and there was two state troopers. One would would go the, the eighteen wheelers as they went across. One would trooper was in the front, one was in the back, and they would escort them across. Um, you know, it's scary when it's windy. It's scary when it's not windy, uh, and I'm glad, you know, I, I had to cross it into Canada, and I had to cross it back out, and, and back in the 80s, um, I remember when I, when I left my parents' house where they, where they were staying in that city, and I, I don't remember the name of the city, but as I was driving back to St. Marie, there was two radio stations, they were on AM, and one was in French, and one was in English, and they were talking about how they made Tabasco sauce. And uh, then once I crossed into Michigan, I, I, I think I picked up another radio station, but there was a lot of prisons, a lot of signs, don't pick up hitchhikers. And, and uh, but I, I think I got another radio station. And as I went farther south, I, I picked up more, but I, I remember that listening to how they make uh, the sauce. Let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't like bridges. The floating lake bridge is cool. Wow, I'd like to see that. I don't know about, uh, I'm gonna have to Google that or maybe maybe there's a YouTube video on that. Uh, Dan's here, hey Dan, RL. Uh, there's 18 people. Says back to to 19 minutes, but I don't know if it, the time restarted when I lost the internet. I have no idea what happened. I, I think I've done 10 or, or 12 live streams and, and never lost a live stream. I, I've seen other people uh, lose it, but it's strange for me. Uh, yeah, for it was was it was a bridge on pontoons. 
And, and where, where is the bridge located? Uh, I, I doubt if we ever get up there to drive across it. Um, some more cinnamon meg. British Columbia. Nina's always wants to go to British Columbia. And as everybody knows we usually go to the the Middle East, not the Middle East, I'm sorry, to the Asian uh, part of the world. But I think this year Nina said, no, we're gonna have to stay in the States. I, I think what Nina's planning on is one of the, the trains that you take, the Amtrak trains with it. It's got the car with the scenic view. You sit up in the seats and the, the windows and windows up in the sky. And uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna, not not really sure, five days, seven days, maybe do something like from Chicago to Seattle or something like that. But they, they have a train that goes into Canada and I think one of the stops or, or several of the stops are in, in British Columbia. Um, hey, George is here. You guys use an infrastructure project. Hey, uh, Vasily. Can, can you tell me who's going to win the election uh, for our, our president this year? Um, of course, I'm, I'm just joking, but with, with everything that's going on, uh, let's see. Uh, super bridge. We have a pretty long bridge. Um, when, when you're going down I-10, you leave Houston, you go to Beaumont, and as you're on the way, uh, you're in Louisiana, there's a bridge, and I can't remember uh, what the name of the bridge is, but it's 19 miles long, and it just goes over the swamp. And uh, I had a, a guy I used to work with that, that was from Louisiana, and he told me when you go across that bridge, if, if you look to your right, as you're going into Louisiana, in the wintertime when the leaves are gone, there's houses out there on these little islands and, and they have no electricity. And I'm thinking, what? And sure enough, you know, I, I slowed down when I went across the bridge and uh, sure enough, there was, there was houses on stilts out there, you know, just little islands and they, they had uh, boats, little skiffs, uh, it's really, really strange to see that. <laughs> uh, Vasily, yeah, they have not decided yet. Uh, okay. Well, as soon as you let, us, as soon as you find out who uh, Putin's going to put in office, if you could let us know. Uh, let's see, James is here. The other James is here. I'm getting behind on the comment. Uh, longest bridge I've ever been on. It's a Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Uh, okay, folks, pleasure as always. Hey, Smitty, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a good evening. Let's see. Okay, so caught up on the, the comments. So we've got a, a pretty good sized bridge too that goes from the mainland to Galveston Island. Uh, they call it the Causeway and, it, and it's pretty high. We also have another pretty good bridge. It's a, a cable bridge. Um, it goes from uh, Deer Park to Baytown. Uh, it's a Fred Hartman bridge. And it's a, it's a pretty long bridge. When I was uh, growing up in the 60s, 70s, and, and even the 80s, and the bridge wasn't there, there was a tunnel. Um, it was called the Baytown Tunnel. And you would actually go underneath the ship channel. And we still have another tunnel, the Washburn Tunnel, which is in Pasadena that goes underneath the, uh, the ship channel. And, and it's old, it's, I mean, red brick, and it's been there forever. And then, of course, we have some ferries, boat ferries. Uh, we've got a ferry that goes from uh, Galveston Island uh, across to uh, the Bolivar side. 
And it's it's a big ferry. It holds probably 40 cars. And then we have another little little place in, in Crosby. It's got a ferry, and I think it holds eight cars. It's re really small. Um, let's see. Hey, Mark's here. How you doing, Mark? I haven't seen you in a while. Let's see. Yeah, I've, I've watched a few of, of uh, Dub C's uh, reviews, but man, I'm subscribed to so many people and um, it's hard to keep up with all of them. So going back to um, trying to find 100 miles an hour over the Austria Bridge in Washington State. Wow, Pat. Now, Pat, are, are, are you a police officer or were you just driving 100 miles an hour? Um, uh, Fred, I don't know. It's something. Let me see if I can... I don't know, it's just some kind of art that Nina picked out. I'm not sure, let me get this set back up. I'm not sure where she got it at. Um, it's just, it's pretty heavy. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think she got it from Garden Ridge or, or someplace like that. It, it, it looks pretty cool. She was gonna take it down and hang some pictures, but I told her to look good to me, so I guess it looked good to her and she left it. It's her studio. Hey, Sue, how are you doing? Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, yeah, it, I, when, when Nina does her studio, she's got the, the camera uh, farther back from her, uh, but she's got the wireless mount, uh, mic and I had, I don't know how to work that thing, thing, so I have to have it up. But when she's back, it shows the artwork. She's got some some uh, some stands on the, uh, some shelving on the on the side, and uh, she's got some books and some uh, coffee mugs and things like that. Um, if, if you haven't uh, seen her studio, Nina Ross Business Solutions YouTube channel. Um, no, back in the eighties on the way to spring break. Yeah, I remember the eighties. I used to drive pretty fast too. I was, uh, like I, I was telling you, I used to go to visit my parents in Canada. I, I don't like to fly. Of course now I fly, but back then I, I would always drive. And I got on, when I got up to Pennsylvania, there was a lot of, uh, turnpikes or toll roads. So I get on this one, the, I pull up to the window, the lady hands me this little ticket and wherever you get off, you, you hand them the ticket and they tell you how much you owe. So I get on this, this toll road and I had a diesel truck at the time and it would only go 82 and a half miles an hour. So I take off, I'm going 82 and a half miles an hour and I, I, I think I stayed on it maybe, I don't know, 100 miles, something like that. So I pulled up to the toll booth. The lady told me how much I owed. Back then it was a dollar something. So I gave her a dollar something. And she said, pull right over there to the right. I'm like, what? She said, pull right over there to the right. And so I said, okay. So I pull over and this Pennsylvania trooper comes out and he's got the, the Smokey the Bear hat on. And, uh, walks up to me and says, um, you uh, need your driver's license and registration and insurance. I said, what I do? He said, you were driving 82 miles an hour. What they did is they, they clocked me with the time. And uh, so he was gonna write me a ticket. And of course, luckily I was a, a police officer and uh, he let me go, but um, didn't, coming back, I didn't, go too much over the speed limit. 
I think if my truck hadn't been able to go to a hundred, I might've been going a hundred miles an hour, but um, they had a governor on it. So that's as fast as it would go. See, Fred said the eighties was the me decade. I have to say the seventies and eighties were good to me. Uh, I remember them well. Well, most of them. <laughs> uh, uh, you've been nabbed three times, Fred. Did you get Did you get a ticket? I've been I've been lucky. I, the last time I I got uh, stopped by a police officer, uh, I was in Nina's truck. This was uh, probably I don't know, six years ago, and. I'm leaving the house, I'm in her truck. I don't remember why she was in my truck, but I, I was driving her truck and she had a big four wheel drive, big tires, lift kit, all that. And at the end of the street was a stop sign. There was a police officer sitting there. And so I pulled up to the stop sign and I stopped. And I, I looked at the police officer, he looked at me. I put my blinker on, I turned right. And uh, wow, 500 bucks. So. The, the police officer starts following me. I take a left. He gets behind me, turns on his lights, and he walks up to the truck. Of course, you know, I'm having to look down because the truck's so tall. Uh, hey, Nathan. I'm glad you could join us. So he asked me if the driver's license. I said, why'd you stop me? He said, your inspection sticker's out. And I look, and I said, well, it's not my truck. It's, it's my, my wife's truck. But... Luckily, he let me go with a warning, so I had to go, whatever I was going to do that day, and then I had to go get an inspection sticker. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've been checking out your videos, Nathan. I'm, I'm waiting to see more of the uh, 60s BMW. Let's see. Yeah, for, well, Fred, three... If, Three tickets, were you nabbed three times on the same day? Tickets now are, are expensive. I, I remember when, when I was a police officer, we never wrote tickets for 10 over yet. You, you had to be going 16 miles an hour or faster, uh, unless you were in the city. But if you were on the freeway uh, and the speed limit was 55, you'd have to be going 71 for for my department to write tickets. Uh, we, we didn't want to be known as a speed trap. And, and if you're going 16 miles over the speed limit, it's time to bring it to your attention. Uh, but I, I think a ticket back then was 10 over was $60. And then every mile over that was $2. So that would have been what, $72. And I think they had an administration fee or something added to it. So tickets back then weren't too bad, but I, I think tickets now are Man, I, I think a seatbelt ticket here is, is in Texas is 500 bucks, and that's just for your first offense. And here in Texas, we have uh, uh, police officers, they, they work the STEC program, and, and all their job is is to write 20 tickets, and uh, they don't have to answer any calls or anything, so they, they you know, they on the underpasses looking for seatbelts and registrations and just crazy. Let's see. Yeah, man. We, in, in the city of Houston, they have, well, I call them uh, meter maids, but they're, they're not police officers, but they, they have the authority to put parking tickets on. And, uh, Man, and they go crazy. And, and now they've got it so so easy here in, in the States. They scan your registration sticker and uh, they scan your license plate and then the ticket's printed out. And of course, you know, for a parking ticket and they slide it in the orange envelope and put it under your, your windshield wiper. Just close to Domino's. I worked there. He came in drunk. I made a phone girl cry. Wow. Uh, hey, Carson. 
I haven't seen you in a while. It, man, uh, over in Car over there where Carson's at in, in Germany, it's got to be, what, two or three o'clock in the morning? Uh, let's see. I'm doing a couple other things. It just is it seeing everyone saying hi. Yeah, I'm gonna. I shot you a text the other day, Nathan. I, I, maybe maybe you didn't get it, uh, but I'm probably gonna give you a call. Uh, probably won't be after the live stream. I got to put all this stuff away because this is uh, Nina Nina's uh, studio. But Nathan, I give you a call probably tomorrow. I got uh, some couple things I want to run by you. Yeah, Carson, 4 a.m. Man, how's the weather over there in, in Germany? Is it uh, is it cold? Yeah, Marilyn, who's, who's autograph? Uh, oh, Chuck Berry. You know, some of these guys, uh, I've read things like Bruce Willis. He doesn't give autographs to, to people. And, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking if... You're a movie star and th these are your fans. You should at least take time uh, to to sign some autographs. Uh, years ago at, a, at one of my old gyms, uh, Booker T. Washington, he, he's a wrestler. I'm sure a lot of you know, know him or heard of him, but if, if you haven't, he, he, uh, he has a gym. Uh, okay, cars are not cold. It's, yeah, it's not cold here either, but. Uh, Booker T. Washington has a gym now in Texas City, which is between Houston and Galveston. But he used to to work out at my gym where I trained at, and he had these little five by seven black and white pictures. And people would come up to him and say, "Oh, I know who you are. My son, you know, just adores you or whatever." And he would stop and open up his gym bag and get a pen and, and a, a black little five by seven black and white. And what's your son's name or your daughter's name or your husband's name or whatever. And, and he'd sign a little autograph right there and, and hand it to him. And then he'd put the stuff back in his gym bag and go back to working out. And I'm thinking, you know, that's, that's the way you're supposed to do it. And, and, you know, back then, you know, you had to go Walgreens or, or someplace and get the pictures. Uh, but you know how much those little five by sevens cost him, and I, I thought that was really cool that, that he carried those around. Uh, no, we don't have any police MREs here. I I don't think uh, you know if you're a police officer. You, you know, typically you just work your eight hour shift. You know, if you're a, uh, on the SWAT team and there's a situation, you you probably would have to stay. And, and I'm sure if they had, uh, they, they may have some American MREs. I, I, I don't know. I got a, a friend of mine that's on the SWAT team, uh, the Houston SWAT team. And I've never even thought about asking him, hey, if you're out there for 12, 18 hours or, or longer, you know, uh, what do you eat? So uh, I'll get with him and find out if, if they actually carry something to eat uh, you know, well, there's a lot of SWAT officers, so maybe, you know, after eight hours, they rotate out. I'm not, not sure. Uh, I know a lot of countries have like firemen and, and police and, and, uh, prison guard rations. Let's see, Nathan's got a, a video coming out tomorrow. So be looking forward to that. Uh, I'm going to shoot a video tomorrow. I'm going to shoot one of the uh, humanitarian rations and uh, see how that goes. Uh, are you going to be buying many more rations? Uh, higher prices and slowing things down. Yeah, Pat, you know, I think right now while the, the, the virus is going around, uh, uh, you know, I, I look on eBay, I look on Amazon, and, and everything's just sky high so uh we've still got a, a quite a few of the first strike and the meal cold weathers we've got i think we've got about 50 of the old brown bag ones um you know we we buy what we can um 
been trying to, we've been mulling the idea back and forth about maybe getting some vegetarian ones, but the only problem with that, you know, if, oh, okay, Kiri Snacks. Uh, the only, only problem with that is if we order, let's say we start off with a case and, you know, the case comes through fine and then we get to back where we're ordering, let's say 10 cases and customs decides to just rip them all open. And, you know, if they rip the, the, the ration open and they don't destroy anything, well, that, that devalues the ration by at least five bucks just because the wrapper's been, the, uh, been cut. And then most of the time, when they cut them open, they, they go deep and they end up cutting other things too. So we're not really sure. Uh, we were going to get some Spanish breakfast. Um, you know, they only made once a year. Uh, I think they're made in June or July. We've, we've got two vendors over in, in Spain. Uh, so we, we can't actually get them till I think October, but Nina and I, you know, with the USDA, we, we thought they might just cut them all open to see what was inside. So, um, and if they cut too deep, you know, they, they, they've got the sweet condensed milk. Um, so no, we're still kind of throwing the idea back and forth. Uh, case A B over 1200 euros. Yeah, Carson, and, and I, I was talking uh, earlier about the, the prices on eBay. Uh, there was a guy, all, some of the cases, just a case of A or B are selling for 200 bucks. And uh, there, I've seen them as high as uh, $400 for a case of A and B. They're just, they, they've just, for some reason, I, I don't know if it's the virus scare or, or what, that people are are starting to purchase them. And like I was saying earlier, before you were here, uh, we've sold all of our uh, American rations, the, the MREs, not to, we, we've still got cold weathers and mores and that, but uh, I think we're down to just one of the brown bag MREs. People have just been buying them left and right. And I, I think, I think we were a little bit cheaper. We try to stay cheaper than, than eBay. Uh, I think we were, I don't know, a couple of dollars cheaper. And and some of the other ones that that have, uh, I've seen some meal cold weathers for, I think 27.99. But when you look at, at them, they've only got one or two sales. Readiness reviews. Glad you're here. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I missed your comment up earlier. I always try to look for the positive side. Once the buyer's thing blows over, it'll be a bunch of people selling MREs. Yeah. And, you know, here's something that really bothers me. Uh, you know, after a disaster, on eBay, there's all those humanitarian rations being sold. And, you know, those that's my taxpayer's money. And I, I noticed, what was it, the, the last disaster, Puerto Rico, I'm drawing a blank, but there was cases, I mean, hundreds of cases being sold from Puerto Rico of the humanitarian rations. Oh yeah, people stealing trucks, truckloads of masks. Yeah, um, we. I read an article. There was a guy, and I don't remember if he's if he was on Amazon or eBay or maybe both, but he had bought these. I think they're the M ninety two masks, and he had bought them, and he was selling them for fifty dollars a piece, and. I think it said he bought 20 cases of them and sell them for 50 bucks a piece. Can you believe that? Um, my surplus guy has cases for $90 and my links on my channel. Now, is that $90, does that include shipping? 
because it's, I'm, I'm definitely after the, the live stream, I'm, I'm going to go and look because I would I'd love to buy uh, a lot of cases, especially if they're $90 and even if, you know, 40 or $50 for shipping. Um, so we have, we have a stock, we've got a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a wine cooler and it's, it actually it's right over there and the temperature is set for it to stay between 54 and 64 and we have uh, our rations in there we we've you know like here in in the southern part of texas you know we we have hurricanes and uh we we've had some major hurricanes where you can't buy gas and the grocery stores are closed so uh we've got our stock MRE are bit rich. Is that a place to buy uh, rations, Fred? So we, we have our rations over here and we've been giving a, a few away. And so I'd, I'd like to get a couple of cases. I'm not sure, uh, maybe a case of A and B. I don't think four cases would fit in there. We, we still have some in there. Um, used to, take them for lunch, but man, he, he started eating MREs for lunch and you know, the, those MREs, I said one thing about the MREs, they'll stay with you all day. Uh, and I, I would love to just eat them every day, but I uh, just can't. No hand sanitizer in Washington state. Yeah, and I don't think there's any hand sanitizer here. And, and here's something that I noticed today. I went to the grocery store. I had to pick up a few things. But so I try to make my lunch for the whole week. Uh, and the cases of water are almost sold out. And I'm thinking, okay, so we have a, a virus, but why are you buying all the bottled water? Um, you know, we have a... Nina drinks some bottled water, but we also have uh, water in the, that comes out the, the door of the refrigerator and it goes through a filter. So I, I can't understand why everyone is buying all the water at the, at the grocery stores. It just blows my mind. Um, yeah, hand sanitizer. We've got a bunch of it at work and uh, hopefully people I work with they don't start taking it home. I try not to use the, the hand sanitizer. Um, I saw a documentary on Netflix that uh, the hand sanitizer is actually bad for you with the different chemicals, but the FDA has approved it because of the small amount that you use to sanitize your hands. Yeah, and, and you know, that's what I do at the office is, is I, I usually, you know, we have good, good, uh, soap, liquid soap. And I, I just wash my hands real good. Uh, we go to the gym and, uh, you know, there's, you know, I, I was there, I don't know, four o'clock. So I'll probably go back tomorrow at four o'clock and I, there's probably be at least a thousand, 2000 people that have touched all the equipment. So, uh, when Nina and I go, we try not to, to touch any, uh, our, our face or rub our eyes or anything like that. And then as soon as we get done working out, take the gloves off and we go and wash our hands. I, I try to wash my hands. I, I try most of the time for 60 seconds. Uh, I put a little water and a little soap and try to wash for 60 seconds. And uh, sometimes it's 30 seconds or 45 seconds. So... I, I figure even 10 or 15 seconds, it's got to be better than, and then not washing your hands. Um, Pat, you work around cattle, so you won't get sick. Okay. Yeah, Carson, and, and we've got that problem here is, is there's a shortage of mask, mask for the, the hospital and the, and the, the actual uh, nurses and doctors. Uh, they need them, and and there's a shortage of them. And I, I'm looking at the thumbs up. Uh, 
17. So if everybody could hit the thumbs up, somebody hit the thumbs down, but uh, thumbs down is better than, than no thumbs at all, I guess. Uh, uh, Vasily, do y'all have the, the virus going around over there in, in Russia too? Um, I think we've got it in most states. I think here, uh, we live in the Harris County, which is the Houston area. And I think there's four reported cases. I don't know if it's as bad as they really say it is. Uh, remember we had the swine flu and the N1, X2 or whatever. And uh, it's like every, every year we have a different um, a string of the virus. 800 cases. 800 in Germany, not bad. I don't, don't remember how many cases we have here. Uh, I was, somebody was uh, on the news was talking, uh, there might be a kind of a splinter strain of it that's developing now over in, in China. And I saw an article, I didn't have time to read it. I saw it today, I was doing something on the internet and uh, went clicked on Yahoo, but I was going to another place and I saw where the hospital, I think it said the hospital in China where the sick people were, had collapsed. But then I saw another article said it was a hotel, so uh, not really sure. Uh, in general, do not panic from flu in a year. You know, and, and, and Vasily, I agree with you 100%. There's more people that die from the flu. Uh, but, you know, with the, our news media here, if it bleeds, it leads. So it's always doom and gloom that they try to report. And uh, no toilet paper or bleach at the supermarkets. I can understand no bleach, but... Uh, I don't see the correlation between the, the virus and the toilet paper. Uh, and, and just a, a, a quick fact about bleach, the, the typical bleach that we buy, uh, if you do need to disinfect some water, it, um, eight drops of bleach per gallon of water, and you let it sit for 30 minutes. So I think a gallon of bleach should get you about 18,000 gallons of water, 18,600, something like that. So a, a gallon of bleach would give you a lot of, of clean drinking water. Uh, yeah, and, and we have a big thing here in Austin, um, south by Southwest, and there's a lot of bands that perform, and I think it goes on for a week. and. Uh, just saw yesterday on the internet where they canceled that and I, I saw on the news I was at the gym so you know I can't hear the TV but I watched reading the ticker tape going by <clears throat> and I think they're talking about canceling basketball games and uh, baseball and football games uh, yeah James I don't know about wiping with bleach you know that but I don't know. And I don't think the virus gives you diarrhea. Uh, but I don't know. Let's see if you're quarantined for for two two weeks. Well, yeah, you got a point because now they, they are having people uh, self-quarantine. So you, you have to stay in the house. So yeah. Uh, Yeah, I, I, I now now I get it with the toilet paper. So, yeah, if you're if you're stuck at home, uh, we have grocery stores here now that deliver groceries to your house. But if you're quarantined in your house, will they still deliver to your house? I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, Vasily with the vodka is always good for me. If I have a stressful day, 
You know, you can take a Xanax or a Valium, a good shot of vodka is, is good medicine for me. Let's see. Yeah, so uh, we got another friend of ours, him and his wife, they're buying canned goods. Uh, I think he said he bought uh, a case of pork and beans and a case of something else. And pork and beans, you know, that if you think about the, the amount of calories in a can, that, that's probably a, a good idea. Uh, I don't know, man. If, if you're having to self-quarantine and it's just you and your wife and, and you don't have a very big house and you're eating pork and beans, it could get bad, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't had vodka in, man, we ran out of vodka a while back. I, I, I like vodka tonic and lime. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, vodka and orange juice, it, it's, it's okay, but sleeveless t-shirts. Hey, Robert, how you doing? Glad you could join us. Uh, get drunk more than one bottle. A half a liter. I, th I think if I drank a half a liter, that, that, that would, uh, that, <laughs> I would probably be uh, pretty buzzed. Uh, Tell you a little story about Nina if, if you want to hear about it. In Thailand, there's the Chang beer, and it's not regulated. So, you know, here typically a beer, it, depending on where what state, it's typically four and a half percent. Sometimes it's five, and then you know you get into your ales at maybe six or seven. But but typically, uh, a regular beer is four and a half percent alcohol. Uh, so when we're in Thailand and we're across the street from the hotel, there's a, it's kind of like a, not really a convenience store, it's a little bit bigger, but it has a restaurant. Uh, so Nina orders one of these chain beers and there's, they're not very big. Um, I don't know, it's probably, I know, if I had to guess, it's probably eight ounces. It goes by milliliters and I don't know about converting milliliters into to ounces, but anyway, so she drank the beer and we, we had dinner over there and we get ready to leave and she is just loaded. And she must've got a beer that was 50% alcohol. Uh, I, I did some research on it and some of the beers can range from 1% alcohol to 90% alcohol. So uh, when we when we go to the to uh, the Asian countries now, we don't drink the Chang beer. Uh, we we do drink some of the Asian beers, but not the, the Chang anymore. And Vasily, you you've been to uh, Thailand. Have, have you tried the Chang beer while you were there? 5% in beer is good. Anything else below is water. Years ago, back in the 70s, uh, if you bought beer uh, here in the Houston area, it was 4.5%. But there was an ordinance in Galveston. Uh, you couldn't buy beer. Uh, you couldn't buy wine or, or spirits, whiskey, vodka, anything like that in Galveston back in the 70s. But the beer had to be like 2%. Uh, so... Uh, if you ever went to Galveston, you always bought the beer before you got to the island because there was very little alcohol content. Yeah, yeah near beer. Uh, homemade beer. Do you make the beer, Vasily? Uh, yeah, Carson, we can get German beer here. We get... Uh, Man, I'm drawing a blank though. The, the beer in the green bottle, Heineken, and uh, several other beers. We have uh, we have like a, a warehouse that sells beer, wine, 
uh, Specs Warehouse. I don't know if they're if in other country or country other states, uh, but they have a lot of different types of beer. Let's see. Your brother like near beer. I I don't really like the taste of beer, so uh, no near beer for me. 3.2% when you were in the army. Heineken is Dutch. Well, see, you know how much I know about beer. <laughs> uh, Bex, yeah, we have Bex here. Yeah, and, and there's places here, in, like I was telling you about Specs Warehouse, it's it's huge. It's uh, some of them, uh, a typical Specs is the size of a, a, a full Walmart and they have all kinds of beer. Here in, in the Houston area, and, and I think maybe the, the whole state of Texas, but we have a lot of uh, breweries that, that are popping up. So now, you know, back in the 60s or 70s, and 80s, you go in and you just had your name brand beer and probably your choice was probably, you know, 20 or less. And, and, and I remember when I was a kid, uh, well, I say kid, in, in the 17, 18, 19, that there wasn't any light beer. Everything was uh, just real, real beer. Uh, and now you go to the grocery store and uh, our grocery store, and there's just one whole lane of different types of beer. Uh, Pilsner is Czech. So Canadian beer is the best. I, I don't even remember the name of any Canadian beer. I, uh, I remember back in the, I think it was the early nineties in, in uh, Toronto, you, if you wanted beer, you had to go to the beer store and you had to take your cans back. You had to take your bottles back and you go in, carry your, your bottles back in and you give them to them and they ring it up and they give you the money back. And then you go to your left and you, you tell them what you want. And people in the back will put it on the, not a conveyor belt, but just one with the wheels and you hear them and it's chun, 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 chun coming out. And then you pick up your beer and you leave. Now, if you wanted beer, I mean, uh, wine or whiskey, you had to go to a different store. Oh, it's still like that? Yeah. Yeah, Molson beer. And uh, I, I, when when I would go to Canada, and of course, you know, my parents have passed away, so I, I haven't been back to Canada for probably well over 20 years. Uh, but my... Uncle Vince always wanted Budweiser. So whenever we went to the to the beer store, we always got Budweiser. Uh, yeah, uh, Miller uh, used to be Miller Highlight, Highlight or High Life, uh, but now you've got uh, Miller Light and just all kinds. And, and Miller was never one of my favorite ones either. Um, when I was a kid growing up, uh, everybody drank slits and I don't even know if they have slits anymore. Uh, but that was a beer of choice for most people in the, in the seventies and, and sixties too. I remember in the sixties, uh, I was just a little boy. There was no pull tops on the beer. So you had to have what we call a uh, church key. And so you, you had to punch the holes in the, in the can to be able to get it out. And then they came with the pull tabs and now the pop tabs. And... Things have changed. I, I, you know, I noticed, and this has nothing to do with MREs, but at our grocery store, uh, sometimes I have to wait on Nina. So I'll, I'll get out of everybody's way and, and, they have this, oh man, it's this glass case. It's got all these different cigarettes in there. Now, when I was a kid, you had Marlboro Red in the pack. You had the regulars and the 100s, and then you had the box and you had the 100s, and then you had the lights and the regular and the 100s and the menthol. Man, I was looking the other day, and there's like 
30 different types of Marlboro cigarettes. Um, and, you know, it's just all of these different types of cigarettes. I, I, I don't smoke and, and uh, never have, but I didn't realize how many different types of Marlboro cigarettes that they have at the, at the grocery stores and the price of them too. I think they're almost $6 a pack. Now, when I was, the last time I was in Canada, a pack of cigarettes here was like two bucks. And in Canada, they were almost six bucks. But uh, Canada, the cigarettes had 25 in a pack and it was kind of a, a flat pack. Um, is it still like that in, in Canada? You know, our cigarettes, there's 20 in a pack stacked two by two. And I think in Canada, they were 25. And I don't think they were stacked two by two. I think they were stacked all the same. So it was a real wide package. Uh, yeah, the, the um, Vasily. Yeah, when when we go to Thailand, we we try all the the beers, uh, except for the chain. Let's see. High life for a nickname was that because you like Miller? Uh, let's see. About 15 bucks now for a 25 pack. Yet, yeah, Dan, are they still the real wide packs? Yeah, some cigarettes, 25 in a pack. But I think Germany, the almost seven euros. So seven euros would put it probably, what, about $8 and 10 cents, depending on the conversion rate. Um, wow. Some are, some aren't. Yeah. yeah. The only only time I've ever seen the, the cigarettes, and like I said, it's been over 20 years since I was there, and, the, and they were big wide packs. And it didn't look like, you know, most people here, you put them in your shirt pocket, but it didn't look like they would fit in a shirt pocket. Uh, RL, checking out. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great evening, too. Let's see. Hey, Daniel, how's it going, man? It's going good here. Uh, been on for about 67 minutes. Probably going to go about another five or 10 minutes, something like that. And uh, just uh, sitting here and we're just talking about a little bit of, of everything. Pat says it's about 10 bucks a pack uh, for cigarettes. Wow. I, I remember the first pack of cigarettes I bought. Um, I went to my friend's house and he, he had some chores or something. His mother asked me to go down to a little convenience store called M&M and get her two packs of, uh, I think they were Benson and Hedges 100. And so I said, you know, I'm probably, I don't know, 12 years old, 10 years old. So she gives me a dollar there, 50 cents a pack. Uh, thanks for stopping by Eco Eco and uh, uh, have a good evening or uh, probably morning over there. So anyway, I go down to the M&M and it, it, it's Mildred, uh, not Mildred, uh, God, I can't think of the guy's name, but anyway, his wife's name was Mildred. His name started with an M. So I go in and I said, I need two packs of Benson Hedges. Of course, remember I'm 12 years old and he knows my parents and he says, uh, why are you buying cigarettes? And I said, oh, they're for uh, Mark's mom. And he knew what she smoked, so he, he sold them to me. But they, they were 50 cents a pack. And, and I can remember as a little kid going grocery shopping with my parents, a carton of cigarettes was $2. 12 bucks a pack. I, I remember I used to uh, dip skull wintergreen and here they were when i started it was 50 cents and went up to a dollar and two dollars and i i gave it up at two dollars but when i would go through kentucky or virginia on my way to canada uh i think skull here was i think it was 
a, a tube, which was 10, I think it was 20 bucks. But when I'd go through uh, Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, uh, uh, I could get a, a tube of skull, 20 bucks here, it was five bucks there because there's no taxes and it's growing there. Uh, let's see. See, you roll your own for a dollar a pack. I had a friend of mine had a, a rolling machine and he would buy the can of tobacco and he would buy the filters and the papers and he would put it in and it was, I think it ran on batteries, but you put it in, you push the button and it would actually roll the cigarette. Uh, it was pretty neat. I don't, I don't remember how much, that was back in the 70s. I don't remember how much uh, the can of tobacco cost. Used to be the, what was it, uh, bugle, bugle man, bugle. You got a, a thing of tobacco and some papers and you roll your own. Hey, John's here. I, I didn't see you come in, John. Yeah, I, I didn't announce it. I, I was, I like to do a live stream when Nina's out of town and, and yes, John, Nina, it really is out of town. Uh, but I talked to old Smokey and he said he wasn't gonna be able to do a live. So uh, I found out from old Smokey about 7.30. So I threw everything together and uh, jumped up. Uh, yeah, John, uh, Nina and I enjoyed making that unboxing uh, video. And we're gonna try to, to put some more humor in. I was uh, talking about that at the beginning. Uh, Try to put a little humor in to some of our reviews. We've got some some good ideas. I think, uh, I hope y'all like them. Let me move this camera a little bit. Uh, I also sell weed, all the weed in the area. The government of Ontario screwed up and legalized weed. We've got a few states here. Um, let's see. Chew the gum, the nicotine gum. I roll them all on one uh, plastic. Two filter machine. You get annoyed by the tobacco dust I left around. Yeah. Uh, gotta gotta clean up after yourself. The wives, they don't they don't like that. Men, we you know, we we pigs anyway. We don't care. The filters are bad for nature. I, I think the filters here, and they may have changed, but I think they're made out of cotton. Uh, but I think if if you throw a cigarette butt out, I think someplace I read or I saw a documentary or something that it, it lasts 30 years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the silly, uh, but Nina's not on the live stream and she's not gonna go back and watch it. She was on earlier. Uh, but she's had a long day uh, on the Indian Reserve. Uh, are they cheaper there on the reservation? You know, when, when I had retired, I moved to uh, for a job out in Arizona and uh, I was in Maricopa County, which is uh, the Phoenix area and all no taxes, okay. Um, but we would ride, I, I had a, a Harley and a friend of mine that I worked with there, out there had one and we would leave about three o'clock in the morning and we'd ride uh, till about six, we stopped to eat breakfast and, and then we were back by nine o'clock because it's, it's hot as hell out there. Uh, so we wanted to get back. Uh, let's see, a mother's here. Can't say the whole name. Nina's doing well. Uh, so anyway, we would be riding and he would, the first time we rode, he pulled over and he said, now look, we're going through an Indian reservation. They have their own police and they have their own laws. If we speed through there, they'll confiscate your motorcycle. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah. Uh, never did see any uh, patrol cars or any units out there. Uh, when we went through the reservation, you know, I'm sure we were just on the outskirts, but uh, 
never never saw any uh, Indian police. Um, well, did I miss something with Carson? What what happened with Carson? Uh, Carson, what, what happened? I have to go back through the comments and I get everything screwed up. Yeah, Dan, Indian Reservation is kind of like that here. It's, uh, it's like their own, own country. Let's see. You know, when I, when I was a little boy, we used to go to the Indian Reservations and, you know, um, we drive and, you know, they, they sold stuff. Had some damage at the chimney. Uh oh. What happened, uh, Carson? Uh, is it a brick chimney? Uh, I, I know a lot of times some of the, the, the bricks will come off the top and uh, sometimes you get birds nesting in there in the, in the summertime. Yeah, I, yeah, filters have the chemicals. Yeah, but I don't know if, you know, here, would any of the wildlife actually eat it? Because, you know, the cigarette butts, man, they, they really stink. Uh, it gets wet from the inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, you need to get, get, that, get that checked out. Maybe it's the flashing around where the chimney and the, and the roof come together. Hopefully it's something simple like that. Uh, so some of the walls on the house get wet too. Have you, do you know where the water's coming in? Is it, is it coming in from the, the flashing? Maybe it's just a matter of, of sealing where the flashing and the, the brick come together. Condensation of the gases. Yeah, you don't want a chimney fire, that's for sure. Yeah, Pat, and, that, and that's what my friend Tom was saying, you know, the, the Indian reservation, they have their own laws, and if you're speeding, they're going to take you to jail, they'll confiscate your motorcycle until you pay all the fines. And um, We were always careful when we went through there. Um, I don't know if I would have had any problems, and, and, and even my friend, we called him Bulldog, his, his name was Tom. He, but he's built like a bulldog. He was a, a retired police officer too. So we both had our retirement IDs. So I'm not sure uh, if we would have gotten in trouble. He, evidently, uh, he seems to think we would have because he would always warn me when we were getting close. Creosote buildup. I, James, I think the only time you get a creosote build up is if you burn like pine, if you burn a hardwood like an oak or a pecan, I don't think you get a creosote burn, uh, build up, do you? Um, yeah, don't forget to turn your clocks. Hey, John gets two days off. Let's see. Yeah, I was sick on Sunday, Sunday night about two o'clock. I got sick to my stomach and, and, uh, I had to take off work on Monday. Uh, so that was an unscheduled day off for me. And I, I hate to take a day off if I'm sick. If I'm going to take a day off, I want to, I don't want to be sick. I want to be able to feel good so I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, I'll get warm receipt when I did the reservation. I've had no troubles. Yeah, Daniel, I, like I said, I've been there many times when I was a kid. Uh, here, our Indian reservations have casinos on them. Uh, we have one, uh, and I haven't been to it in 30 years. I don't remember the name of it, but they have a police department there, but I don't think it's ran, I think it's ran by the city. Um, let's see. oil and central heating. Yeah, we have a fireplace, but it's gas and it really doesn't do anything. It's it's behind a glass door or, or glass window. Uh, it's 
you get the remote control, turn it on, adjust the fire, but it really doesn't put off much heat. But what it does put off is an expensive gas bill. Our, our gas bill typically in the wintertime runs about $40. $40. Uh, one, one year we ran the fireplace, we had uh, Nina's sister and uh, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, and we ran the fireplace for a week and we got the gas bill and it was like 90 bucks. So we don't, we don't use the fireplace anymore. Cause, you know, it's just for looks and not, I'm not gonna pay an extra 40, $50 just for looks. Uh, chimney's 43 years old, same as the house. Wow. You know, my, my friend Arthur, he's over there in uh, Cologne and his girlfriend lives in the same house that her parents lived in, that her, her parents lived in. And so the houses over there are, are very old uh, but you know, here we have houses that are, are 40 years old too. Not many of them, usually the developers come and tear them down so they can put townhouses up. You know, south of Alaska. See, I get a new closet today from Ikea. I had to buy a new one because mine got damaged. Yeah, you know, we've got an Ikea here and it's, it's huge, it's like two stories, but what I don't like about Ikea, and, and I think maybe they're all like that, I'm not sure, but you go in the door and you have to follow this path. It's like, you can't just go in, buy something and walk out. You have to go through the whole store to be able to exit. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get up on our roof anymore. When, you know, when I was younger, 17, 18, I used to get up on the roof, I, you know, in the summertime I would uh, do some roofing, but uh, I'm not getting up there, man. I fall off and it's all over and we have a very high pitch. Uh, our house is, is the top of the roof is equal to a two story house. And then I'm not getting up there. Uh, our ceilings, I think our ceilings in the house are 14 foot tall. So uh, typically they're eight foot. So we're, that's already four foot more height on the roof. Uh, Ikea chocolate, I've never had Ikea chocolate. Do, does Ikea have food and, and things inside of it? Here we have uh, gallery furniture uh, and they have a, like a little restaurant and, and if you go in there and you buy something, you can go in there and, and eat and, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's nothing fancy, you know, hot dogs, some barbecue, things like that. Uh, yeah, John, we're, we're doing fine. Uh, Nina's out of town. Uh, she goes up there once a month, help her sister. Uh, and so... Yeah, yeah. I get the opportunity to do a live if, if old Smokey's not doing a live. And I, I, John, I talked to him earlier. He said he wasn't going to do one. So here I am. Yeah, man. I, I, when I was younger, I'd get up, I'd, I'd fix my roof, I'd change my oil, you know, all of that. And, and you know, now, take my, my, my truck over, get the oil changed, and I get a car wash. And in the old days, you did all that yourself. Uh, yeah, Daniel, and then, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's a nice feeling when you have, it's your house, it's your garage, full of your tools. Uh, we, we don't have too many tools, uh, you know, before we bought this house, you know, Nina had a big four wheel drive jacked up, F-150, 250, whatever it was, and I had that Hummer. So that filled up the garage, so there was no room for any tools in there. Um, hey, Carson, thanks for stopping by. I think it's probably, what, five o'clock over there now? Man, I, I appreciate you stopping by, especially uh, 
when you stop by at four o'clock in the morning, it's probably five now. Uh, let's see, Nina's back. How much longer are you gonna go? Uh, are you gonna be on? Uh, probably just a, a few more minutes, not long. Uh, let's see. Yeah, have a good evening, Carson. Hopefully you get your, your chimney fixed. It doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, Ikea, man, it's, it's something. Hey, here, old mate Drop Bear. How you doing, buddy? I haven't uh, seen you in a while. You must be just getting up. Uh, it's probably morning over there. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Vasily on his last live stream, or the live stream for that, he talked about the History Channel. And, uh, well, I talked to him today, but I, I, I'm not going to say I, what we talked about because I don't know if it's it ready to come out or not. Uh, man, I, you know, being up in Anchorage or someplace like that, you're know, kind of on the other end of the food chain there. Uh, Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to watching Old Smokey. I didn't know that the, the view, debut was on the 25th. <clears throat> I have to get with Old, old Smokey and, and find out. Um, so, uh, Old Mate, how is the wildfires? Are they starting to slow down any? So 2.30 on Sunday, okay, Sunday. It's gonna be Sunday afternoon. It's uh, 9.30, which is uh, 21.37 hours on Saturday evening. Yeah, Pat, me too, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We, Nina and I, we watch a lot of, of History Channel and, and just a, a lot of documentaries. Uh, occasionally, Nina's not here. Like tonight, after I get off the live stream, it'd be some scary movies. Nina, she doesn't like scary movies, so. Let's see. Yeah, uh, oh mate, do, do y'all have time change there? Tonight, we... Uh, we fall forward, so we, we go up an hour, so uh, two o'clock, we change the time, it'd be three o'clock, so lose an hour of sleep, gain an hour of daylight. Now, when I moved out to Arizona, and like I said, it was in the Phoenix area, there was no time change, so uh, in the summertime, it was daylight at five o'clock in the morning. And, and that worked out good, you know, I'd have to go to some construction sites and, and those guys would, would start at five in the morning so that and they'd work through lunch so they could get off at one before the heat of the day. You know, out there, a, 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 a typical summer day, 115, 118 degrees, uh, it was hot out there. Uh, I noticed Renee, she put out a video today. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it came out today. I watched it today. It was the snowflake video and, and, and it was a pretty funny video. Man, a customs is hitting everybody. Some of the forums and some of the people that I, I, I talked to that, you know, they get the, the French mains and, uh, all, all of them are, are maybe not all of them, but, uh, you know, when the USDA lady was here, she said that they were working with Amazon and eBay and, and then they were notifying them when rations were being purchased. It's hard to believe that if you think about it, 
you know, the port of entry, you've got New York, you've got California and, and a couple of other ports of entry where customs is. And just imagine how many millions and millions of packages come through and they're able to detect uh, uh, a, like a Russian ration or something like that. And, you know, what the hell, you, you, you know, you, now, now you're picking on rations, isn't there enough uh, drugs and other things that you should be seizing rather than my damn rations, but that's just the way it is. Yeah, oh mate, we've got some states here. I, I don't know which ones. I think Chicago and, and Arizona and a few states, they don't do the time change. I, I wish we didn't do it here. Okay, oh mate, thanks for stopping by. Man, I hope you have the, what's left of your weekend uh, is good. Let's see. Yeah, you know, the USDA, I, and I don't know how much longer it's going to last. I remember when, when I bought my first ration, uh, there was hardly any foreign rations. I think there was some Russian rations on there, and then the market got oversaturated, and uh, they were everywhere, and then all of a sudden, the USDA came in, started confiscating the rations, shutting people down, uh, and then all it did really was raise the price. You know, you get a Russian ration for 40 bucks or uh, I've seen some uh, uh, French rations used to be 40 bucks, you know, 50 bucks. And, and now they're almost a hundred bucks. Georgia was talking about dropping the time change. Yeah, yeah I wish we'd drop it here too. Yeah, uh, the uh, oh, the, the uh, Russian IRPs, the one with the star on it, uh, they were selling for $40. First Russian ration I bought was the, uh, the Russian IRP. And I think I paid $39.99. That was shipping and everything. Uh, probably, I don't know, three years ago or something like that. Um, uh, I, I look at, um, uh, what is that? Uh, there's a, a Russian website, uh, rocket something. I don't remember now, but the rations on there, you know, they're like seven, $10. I think, uh, Kazakhstan is like 12 bucks or 10 bucks, but it's a shipping. The favorite business? What, 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 what are you talking about, Vasily? Uh, time change doesn't actually help here in Alaska. Yeah, I had a friend of mine that was stationed in Alaska, and I'm, I, I don't remember where it was. He was in the Army. This was back in the 80s. And he said it was daylight, 24 hours a day. And in the barracks, they, they uh, had to black out the windows. So they could they could sleep. Let's see. You know, if, if Vasily, if you could sell rations and get them here and guarantee that they they were here, you could make a lot of money off of them. Uh, our shipping just went up too. We used to pay, I think, twelve dollars and fifty cents for a medium box and. I think it's $14 and something. It's getting crazy. A Russian ration costs five or $10. Yeah, the the, the rations are cheap. And, and even in Canada and, uh, and the UK, uh, I, I think, I don't remember who it was now. I, um, Dean said that a, a UK ration was five or seven pounds. So five would be probably around seven, seven to, to nine dollars uh, in American money. Yeah, that's right, Pat, rocket store. And uh, you know, the, the rations over there are cheap, but it's just the shipping, getting them over here. And if you ship UPS and, and you can ask Nathan, uh, they, they will actually turn you into the USDA and then they want to bill you
Yeah, John, it, you, you work a lot of hours and, and it, it's hard for me to, to uh, post to and um, I, I'm going to try to do a review tomorrow, but, you know, we've got, you know, between working and uh, trying to network and we, we've got this, the other, the third channel out with the construction videos, trying to put those together. Man, it's just, it, it's hard to, to post. So, I ran to Nathan for 120 US. Yeah, it's a, uh, so let's see, 12 and a half, 24, 25, 26, it's probably it's somewhere around 28 pounds. That's, that's not a bad price for shipping. Uh, yeah, uh, John, time to slow down in life. Yeah, John, you, ever since I've met you, you've always worked a lot of, a lot of hours. Well, all right, guys, it says I've been streaming for 96 minutes, it's a long time. I want to make sure I get in some, some movie time tonight. Like I told everybody earlier, anyone doesn't like scary movies or anything like that. She has nightmares. So when she's out of town, it's scary movie night. And uh, so it's almost 10. I can probably get in uh, probably t two movies. So as long as I'm in bed by 2 o'clock, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm going to get up in the morning, drink my coffee, fix me something to eat, and then I something light, and then I'm going to do a, a ration review. Hopefully I'll have it out. I don't know. I'll shoot it tomorrow. Maybe I'll have it out tomorrow evening or, or maybe Monday, something like that. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it. I certainly appreciate everybody stopping by. And uh, I know we got off subject and talked about everything from bridges to cigarettes to alcohol, but uh, I certainly enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you later.